welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the bloodiest and most hardcore moments from across the animated Castlevania series, as well as its sequel, Castlevania Nocturne. Spoilers ahead. <laughs> Number 10, Take Me to Church. Not that we relish the thought of seeing regular people get devoured by night creatures, but if there was one person who deserved to get their face eaten, it would be the Cardinal. Who cannot enter the house of God? God is not here. Corrupt and narcissistic to the nth degree, it was he who caused the execution of Lisa Tepesh, and in turn, kickstarted Dracula's murderous revenge. She was a witch! Lies in your house of God. So it was somewhat cathartic to see his faith, and assumedly most of his cranium, be shattered as demons invade his church to take a bite out of him. Let me kiss you. <laughs> Number 9. Cho's Dance of Death. A brief but brutal flashback. Sumi and Taka's backstory gave us a glimpse as to how vampires in the Far East like to play with their food. Some new horror, some new punishment. As a member of Dracula's court, Cho is a high-ranking vampire in her own right, one who apparently enjoys watching her prey struggle before she finishes them off. As evidenced from when she toyed with a samurai and systematically sliced him to pieces before going in for one last drink and wish only for the chance to free our people from her teeth. It's a ritualistic bloodbath that makes you wonder if seppuku might have been the better option from the get-go. Number 8. Terra is Turned Despite renewing his capacity for magic, it's fair to say Richter Belmont's adventure ended somewhat poorly. <laughs> With the arrival of the vampire messiah Urzabed Bathory, she easily dominates the new gang of vampire hunters, determined to turn young sorceress Maria into her thrall as a means of securing an alliance with her forge master faster. Take me. It has to be someone he loves. He loves me. In a fit of desperation, Tara volunteers herself in place of her daughter. There's nothing Richter can do as everyone's mama figure is twisted into a bloodthirsty beast but the time the series fades to black. <laughs> Number 7. A Lesson in Loyalty Godbrand's big mouth was always going to be his undoing. It may be time for the old man to sit in his study and let the rest of us take care of this for him. Do it right. Honestly, what was he thinking? Discussing ideas of treason with Dracula's most loyal follower? You would betray Dracula. Unlike the Viking vampire, Isaac has no intention of ever betraying Dracula, and so takes it upon himself to remove Godbrand from the equation before he can stir up trouble. Going from self-flagellator to executioner in the blink of an eye, Isaac shows no mercy as he tears out Godbrand's throat before watching him burn. Yikes. Thank you for showing me the truth. Number 6. The Judge's Little Pleasures Everyone enjoys a hobby, it just so happens that the Judge of Lindenfeld very much enjoys removing nuisances from his town. Permanently. It has its little pleasures. While seeing him trick evil priest Sala into falling to his own death via a spike trap might be seen as a good thing, <laughs> I've killed Sala. It soon becomes clear that said spike pit has had frequent use over the years. It doesn't take long for Trevor and Saifa to discover that the judge had sent numerous members of the town to their doom, including children, while keeping their shoes as a trophy. He was the judge, and he found his little pleasures. Number 5. Carmilla Usurped Carmilla may have dreamed of becoming the queen of the world, but her empire was struck before it could begin, and in the bloodiest way possible. Laying siege to Styria, Isaac and his night creature army corner the vampirus, kickstarting a visually stunning brawl. I understand you have developed some more ambitions. I'm nothing but ambition. I'm a queen. While Carmilla's rage and inhuman abilities allowed her to last longer than most, 
Isaac and his seemingly endless forces snuff out any hope of victory. In typical Carmilla fashion, she decides to end things on her own terms, going out with a blaze of glory while spitting venom. I am Camilla of Sturia and f you. Number 4. The End of Dracula While the climactic battle against the Lord of the Night was indeed a spectacle, Dracula's demise was far more of a quiet, intimate affair, which somehow made the bloody outcome all the more harrowing. Please, I'm killing a boy. Having finally realized the monster he's become by almost killing his own son, Dracula allows Alucard to stake him. Son. Father. You'd think that would be the end of it, but his death is the furthest thing from quick. Not only does Alucard have to watch his father melt away before his eyes, but also have Trevor deliver one final decapitation. Yeah. Number 3. A Threesome Gone Wrong Poor Alucard. Just when you thought he'd reached the bottom, along comes a fresh wave of suffering to leave yet another scar on his psyche. After accepting Taka and Sumi as potential students, Alucard must have figured his lonely days were finally behind him. What's wrong? Nothing is wrong. That is, until they enter his room one night under the pretenses of seduction, leading to things getting very spicy. As you might have guessed, this was all a ruse, with the two planning to assassinate the hybrid and take control of the castle themselves. Do you expect us to believe you're different? I tried to be. Thankfully, Alucard's floating sword comes in clutch at the last second, putting a bloody end to the Night of Passion. I never lied to you. Number 2. Trevor vs. Death You couldn't ask for a bigger threat for the last Belmont to face during his final outing than the embodiment of Death itself. Oi. Death. I want a word with you. You know me? I'm Trevor Belmont of House Belmont. Of course I know you. After growing gigantic on the power of thousands of human souls, death goes from your average reaper to a kaiju, and the only one standing in its way is Trevor. Despite getting the stuffing knocked out of him, Trevor and his morning star still prove to be enough to bring the heat, to the extent he's able to make an opening and clutch the win. How does one man beat death, you might ask? Because he's Trevor effing Belmont, that's how. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Striga Goes Beast Mode And just when you thought the gore and body count in this show couldn't go any higher, along comes one of the most beautiful slaughter fests put to animation. What's in it? Day armor. Set upon by villagers during daylight hours, Striga is given no choice but to use her day armor and go full dark souls on the encroachers. In a gorgeously graphic homage to Kentaro Miura's Berserk, Striga absolutely devastates anyone who comes within reach of her sword. It's so visceral yet so captivating that you cannot help but be in awe of her monstrous strength, even if she is mostly killing desperate farmers. Which moments in Castlevania set your blood on edge? Let us know in the comments. Did you enjoy this video? 
check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.